Hey everybody, Brandon Mason here with Eastman's Hunting Journals and today we're out in the field doing some shooting and we're reviewing the Kestrel 2700 and the Kestrel 5700 to help us all maximize our personal effective range. Now Kestrel has been the industry standard when it comes to measuring variables while in the field. Kestrel units have been used by special forces operations in the military, has been used by combat weather teams, has been used by auto pit crews, and, and has been used by Mount Everest expedition teams, amongst many other things. And hunters are starting to utilize these more and more in the field, or if nothing else, preparing before you go into the field to help you, like I said, maximize your personal effective range. Kestrel has long been known in the military world for long range shooting and being accurate up to extended yardages. Now in the hunting world, long range shooting, long range hunting can mean, a, mean different things to different people. So we're not gonna focus on that terminology. What we're concerned about is each and every one of us has a comfort zone and each and every one of us does well to practice expanding past those comfort zones so that we can make one clean ethical shot in the field. That's what we're about here at Eastman's. That's what Kestrel is about, that's what Hornady is about, and that's why we're working together. So how we're going to use this today in the field is we're going to use some of the basic setups for each device. And we're going to show at 200 yards, which is my zero range for my setup, I generally shoot at animals at 450 or less. But at the range, I practice at distances farther than that, so that way when I'm in the field, I'm extremely comfortable taking those shots at 450 or less, or maybe, maybe even reaching out to 500 yards if the conditions are perfect and optimal. What we're going to do today is we're going to utilize the windy Wyoming spring conditions. We got a good steady crosswind, which we're gonna measure with the Kestrel. And I've already got all my ballistics preloaded, but we're gonna show how to utilize the Kestrel Link Ballistics app to do that. It's very simple, very easy. And then we're gonna range our target. We're gonna plug the range into the Kestrel and the Kestrel takes care of the rest of it. It's seamless. So there's a compass calibration we're gonna do. It's automatically calibrating to humidity conditions and Wyoming is extremely dry. It's almost always dry. And so that's gonna affect how my shot placement is compared to if I was, a really, if I was in a really humid environment. I'm no longer gonna be using Kentucky windage as everybody in the office makes fun of me for. And we're gonna be more precise and more importantly, more ethical. Another way to maximize your personal effective range when you're in the field is since these units are extremely lightweight, they weigh almost nothing, we're, you can keep them in your backpack at all times. Now, when you're in the field, you don't always have time in the moment of truth to get to gather all these environmental factors right before the shot. But most of the time as Western hunters, we're sitting up on a high vantage point, we've glassed out a basin, or we've patterned an animal. In fact, recently I was on an elk hunt where I knew an elk was in a particular basin. We watched him in the timber, we watched him go to bed. Well, we sat on him most of the day, which allowed me to prepare for the shot of wherever he would come out of the timber. I didn't know exactly where he would come out, but I knew he was gonna come out in the dusk evening hours. And so I was pre-ranging, pre-qualifying each of the potential spots so that I could be prepared no matter what the environmental conditions are with the windage, the elevation, all of those conditions that we need to factor in as shooters. When the moment of truth arrived and it happened quickly, right before dark, I can make a quick, clean, ethical shot, which is what we want every time. Got him. He's down. You just killed a big bull. <laughs> Before we begin, we need to calibrate both of the instruments. So again, this is a Kestrel 2700, and this is the Kestrel 5700 with Hornady 4-DOF ballistics loaded right into the unit. You'll notice that the 2700 is mounted on the Kestrel accessory wind vane, which allows it to spin freely in the wind. And this doesn't have to be calibrated on the wind vane. The wind vane is really handy in varying humidity conditions so that you're not holding it close to your body, which could you know, potentially affect the humidity readings and the conditions readings that are on the unit. But just to show how free floating that wind vane is, we're gonna do that one today right on the wind vane. This one we're gonna do handheld. And you'll see this one has the Hornady logo, on the protective covering on the fan or on the, the wind meter. 
and that opens to that. And you can say any little slight breeze, any little breath on this will cause it to move. So it's extraordinarily accurate. When we're calibrating on either of the two devices or any of the devices that Kestrel offers, it's very important not to cover up too much of the back of the device, especially the sensor that you can see is underneath my index finger. Also, we want to keep the wind meter clear, clear of any obstruction. Kestrel, in their engineering and design, have thought ahead of this to encourage people and users to hold this where it's supposed to be held, is this is a contoured grip and your index finger just naturally goes there. It's very comfortable to hold in the hand. So do not hold it like you would hold your smart device because you won't get as accurate a reading. Another important key, you'll notice in this wind vane and also how, how I'm going to hold the 5700, they need to be vertical. They're not as accurate when they're on their side. One slight exception to that is when we're taking air and temperature readings, you can move it in the breeze or in the conditions like this, or you can do it like this for a few seconds until you get an accurate reading and a consistent reading on temperature. And to maximize your calibration efforts on either the devices and the usages of both devices, download the Kestrel Link Ballistics app. It's free on iTunes or on Google Play, and it's got so many features in there that allows you to, like I said, maximize the usage of any Kestrel device that talks Bluetooth and can communicate with the phone. So there's several ballistic profiles. The Hornady 4 DOF system is preloaded in here, but I'm going to show you how to set it up really quickly and really effectively, even if you're not quite tech savvy. So first thing we need to do is connect to the device that we're trying to connect to. You can see it's scanning for available devices. That number right there coincides with the serial number on the back of the Kestrel device that it's trying to pair with, which we can see right here. So the device comes up, we select that device. You can see that the selected device is connecting and it'll go through the stages and it's authenticating and boom, we're connected. And this is all happening within, that happened in less than five seconds. Very quick and easy to do. So gun profile management, as you can see, I already have my specific profile set up, but to show you how easy that is, we get to name the profile. I can name it my own name because this app is able to store several different profiles. And so maybe it's my name and my son's name and my dad's name, or maybe I have different rifle setups in there. So that's what I chose to do. I set it up for my 30-06. And when I select from the bullet library, the caliber that I'm going after, you can see under the 308 caliber, there's 30 out six. And then I scroll down to Hornady, there's 41 different options. And I'm looking for the ELDX, which is right there. For the Kestrel 2700, it doesn't have the Hornady Ford off. It's got the standard G1 and G7 ballistic profiles. So I'm gonna select the G7. That's the one that I tend to use if I'm not using the Hornady Ford off system. So you can see it's selected. It automatically puts all that information into the unit. Now the zero range that I have is actually at 200. Next, we need to select our elevation and windage units. I use traditional MOA. So we're gonna select those for both of them. Now in my menu up here, we hit save profile. Now there's an option to get a profile or send a profile. We're gonna send the profile to the Kestrel 2700 that we're using right now. Now it just warns you that sending a new profile will erase the current profile that's on there. That's okay, because we wanna do that and update it. It's updating the profile and boom. All the information is completely loaded in the Kestrel 2700. Now we're gonna finish our calibrations on the 2700 and on the 5700 and send some shots downrange. Okay, first we're gonna calibrate and get set up with the 2700. I've already done the compass calibration on this device. I'll show you how to do that on the 5700 when we set that one up. And so you can see the readings it's given me from a previous shot angle, shot distance, everything that I had set up already on a previous shot when I was target shooting yesterday. And so to begin our setup, we push the middle button once and it's taking our ambient air temperature, which right now is 47 degrees. Once that is established, and you can see by the thermometer icon on the right side of the screen that you know that you're at the right screen to do that. 
And now we're going to take our angle of our shot. So I'm sitting right here and I'm looking at the 200 yard zero target. Once I'm satisfied with the reading and it's consistent, I push the center button again. Now, is I'm going to go ahead and set it in the wind vane that Kestrel has as an accessory to get a more of an error-free wind reading so that I'm not accidentally holding it in the wrong wind direction. I want that wind vane to hold it exactly where it needs to be. So we got it on the wind meter and you can see it's free floating. We got about a 10 mile an hour wind on average, gusting sometimes up to 15. Lock that in. And now it's telling me where to hold. Again, I have this set on MOA. So with my scope that I have set up, which is an MOA scope, I'm gonna know where to hold. So my elevation is saying at my zero that I need to, or where I'm set up at 200 yards, that I need to hold 0.3 high and 1.1 to the right. We've got a strong wind, and so I need to hold a little bit to the right. So that one's all set up. Let's set up the 5700. One of the things that I love about the Kestrel 5700 with that Hornady Fordoff system loaded into it is that as you go out to expand your personal effective range, whatever that may be, mistakes at close ranges are exponentially increased out like a fan at longer ranges. And so if you're off a little bit at 100 yards, you're going to be off drastically at five, six, seven hundred yards, even at 300 yards. And so using the Kestrel system along with that four DOF system, which isn't using ballistic coefficients anymore, it's using drag coefficients, which are more accurate downrange. So the farther downrange you get, the more they come into play as far as the needs of having those calculations to build your accuracy. Okay, first we power on the device by holding it in right there. There's a power button. And now the 5700 is has a pretty much a full menu on it. This is a more of a fully featured uh, device, including the Hornady Fordoff system. Uh, and again, Fordoff just stands for four degrees of freedom. So you got windage, you have elevation, you have your range, and then you have your angle of attack or otherwise known as our angle compensation, what a lot of rangefinders have in them now. And so with those four factors factored in, we can get a really accurate profile on where we're supposed to be holding down range. And again, some people like using these in the field, some people just like using them in the range, but it's great practice time for you to intimately know your setup, know the conditions, how it's gonna perform in various circumstances. So the first thing we need to do, since we have not calibrated the compass on this device, is we're gonna scroll down to compass calibration. And it's telling us to hold the Kestrel upright, rotate three times slowly, roughly about 10 seconds a turn. And so we're gonna hit start, start button in the middle. And again, we're holding it upright. And it's just giving us an accurate reading while it's in hand. So now we're on two complete turns. And there's three. Calibration is complete. Okay, next we select our target range. And our first target range is right at 200 yards. Okay, so now we're gonna get our target set up. Push the center button and we're gonna capture our environmental readings. It suggests that we do this every 30 minutes. So we're gonna go ahead and start capture again by pushing the center select button. And here's where we're gonna swing back and forth, wave the device, or we can swing it by the tether to get an accurate temperature reading. And it's at uh, 43 degrees. I'm happy with that. It's consistent, it's not fluctuating. I'm gonna end capture. Now we're gonna point the back of our device at our acquired target so that we get our degree of freedom. So we're gonna capture that. And 
capture the wind, which is what the 2700 is doing on the uh, wind vane, we're going to do this manually with our hands, holding the unit in our hand. And you can see how I'm not obstructing any of the sensors. Now our wind is coming pretty strong out of the north here, and uh, we're shooting more towards the west. And so we're going to have a right to left wind out of the north. And so I'm going to start the capture of the wind. I'm going to wait for about five seconds. Then we're going to end the capture. So all my readings should be good to go. And now it is telling me where to hold with the conditions that we just measured. You can see what my elevation is on the top and my windage telling me to hold almost one MOA to the right. Okay, well, let's send a shot down range. And the Kestrel can give me accurate readings no matter what the conditions are. So again, what this is, is this is essentially a confidence builder. Okay, so we took one shot at my zero range at 200 yards before using the Kestrel system. And after using the Kestrel system, we got an adjustment that we needed to be almost right on the money. Some of that was uh, user error a little bit, but we're pretty much hitting dead center, which is what we want. Well, because it's so windy today, we're gonna take a, a quick uh, hike through the sagebrush and go see how we did. Okay, so as we said, you can see that I took a shot post Kestrel adjustment and the wind is screaming this way and I didn't take into account elevation changes or anything I just put it on it and that's where I hit after taking into account the calibrations of the Kestrel brought us back closer to center well there you have it the proofs in the pudding after testing and reviewing the Kestrel 2700 and the Kestrel 5700 we are doing what we set out to do and that is building confidence and maximizing our personal effective range. Now, if you have questions, these devices are extremely techy. We went through basic setup. If you have questions, leave them below in the comments and we will respond and get back to you. And don't forget to subscribe and turn on your notifications so we can send you updates on great gear reviews and tips and tactics just like this.